what's going on, people? This is Lecrae. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Kel Mitchell. Picky Wines, that would be me. <laughs> Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brian Hooks. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole. Yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy, Kev, on stage. Yo, what's up? This is Doug E. Fresh. What up, what up? It's DJ Emmy for that Breakfast Club. What's up, everybody? It's Mr. Talkbox. Hello there. This is Kim Burrell. Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Cardi Cortez. Well, hello there. I am Ja'Kalen Carr. Good afternoon. It's Jess with the mess. Hey, everyone. This is Faith Jesse. My name is Kid from Kid and Play. Peace to the planet. Charlemagne the God here. What's up, y'all? Las Vegas. It's Sad Entertainer. I want you to download and tune into the greatest gospel station in the Las Vegas area. It's the number one gospel station. Number one gospel station. Number one gospel radio. Check it out. I need you to do me a favor. I need you to go download Anointed Radio app. From either the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. For 24-7 gospel. Make sure to check out their website at anointedradionetwork.com. Music for the soul, music for your spirit, music to lift your heart. That soul food for your body, that energy for your spirit. Gospel in the morning, gospel for lunch, gospel for dinner, and then you go to sleep. You know what? Guess what? You're dreaming about some gospel. Sometimes these are the songs that really uplift us and uh, get us through some of the tough times. Salute Pastor J. Calhoun and Anointed Radio. Know your boy wouldn't steer you wrong. Go listen right now. You feel me? Check them out without no doubt. Because gospel is what it's all about. Hey, 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 everybody. It's Pastor Jay. And like always, we're going to start off in normal fashion. And normal fashion is this with a scripture and a prayer. And the scripture we're coming out of is Psalms 103 and 8. And it says, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. God has compassion for you. He loves you. God loves you so much. He gave his only begotten son for you. So, Stop painting him as that picture of of a God that don't love you, the God that gave up on you. He's still waiting for you. He's still giving you chances. He's still giving you breath. He's giving you new days, new graces, new mercies for you to be able to understand that God is here for you, not against you. And nobody could stand against you if you got God. Amen. Amen. Dear Father God, I just thank you for everything that you're doing. I thank you for all the things that you blessed us with, letting us be able to see halfway through this week. God, I ask you just to be able to empower anything that is said today, Lord, on this platform. Let it be able to to help somebody, to be able to to give a breakthrough for someone, break chains for of somebody that's been dealing with something that's felt like they've dealt with it by themselves. God, we just ask you to just be able to touch every person under the sound of my voice with healing, with res- to restore whatever they have lost, to give them the right mindset. God, we just ask you to just be in the midst to be able to help the people under the sound of my voice see the evidence of you in their lives. God, let us be able to reach the unreachable, teach the unteachable, and even touch somebody with the hardest heart to say, what can I do to be saved? Enlarge the territory of anointed radio to be able to go to new airwaves, new countries, new cities, new zip codes, new new broadcast new airwaves to be able to get out to new people to show great representation of you god let tonight something be said to be able to to really change the atmosphere in someone's life where they could be able to say man that that i really need to hear that so god we just thank you we glorify you we give you all the glory and all the praise and we said that all in jesus precious name Amen. 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 This is Pastor Jalen, like always, I got something to say. And what I got to say is this you can follow me at Anointed Jalen on all social media platforms. You can see it at A N O I N T E D J A Y L O N, Pastor Jalen Calhoun. You can find me at Anointed Jalen on all social media platforms. If you want to get any of my music, you can get Jesus Make Me Happy, Renew My Praise, Slip Away, uh, Spirit 
Spirit Flows Through Me and my new song, Can I Get a Little Grace? My new song that's hit a million on SoundCloud. Make sure you go check that out and keep supporting. This is the Grace Era and the Grace Tour has begun. Start sharing some grace to your brothers and sisters, the people in your close circle, your family members, that cousin you ain't talked to in a minute, the mother and the dad that you don't have the best relationship with. Get them some grace and fix it because life is too short. Amen. Amen. So with that, I want you to make sure you share, like, subscribe, make sure you share all my Instagram people, share Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, make sure you share, like, subscribe, tag some people, add some people. It's going to be a great show tonight. And before I bring anybody else up, let's go ahead and pay some bills. I want to go ahead and shout out the celebration of gospel. Anointed Radio will be in the house for the celebration of gospel for the Super Bowl weekend next week. Uh, we'll be on the red carpet interviewing some great people in gospel and sport players that are going to be here in Las Vegas for the Las Vegas Super Bowl versus the Chiefs versus the 49ers. So definitely make sure that you guys come in attendance. A lot of people's coming to the city. So make sure that you guys support Las, Las Vegas having such an event. Years ago when Anoint Radio started, we had no sports teams. But can I tell y'all something today? We're having the Super Bowl here. This is major. Soon we're going to have the Olympics in a few more years. A lot of great things are coming. We have the NFL draft as well. So a lot of great things are came to Las Vegas. But I got to talk about our Las Vegas sports. Let's shout out to UNLV men and women basketball team. Shout out to the Las Vegas Raiders. I know we, we're not in our own Super Bowl, but we got we got it next year. Amen. Uh, shout out to our two time champion, the WNBA Las Vegas Aces. Shout out to the Las Vegas Lights. The Knights are Stanley Cup champions and are soon to be Las Vegas Athletics, who will be coming from Oakland to Las Vegas. So definitely support your Las Vegas sports. There's a lot of things happening. We have the NFL um, flag league here just starting up so definitely support bring your kids out there's so much things coming to vegas we're becoming a sports mecca it's amazing so definitely if if you're if you're here in las vegas go to a game support a team that that's what really helps these teams nowadays it's not just for entertainment but it definitely needs community support as well because they're doing things in the community great things in the community so they need your support amen amen so that is all the bills we have to pay with all our sports. Make sure you support, support Las Vegas sports. Make sure you download the Anointed Radio app. We have a new co-host today. And she came on and she applied for our show. Everyone know that we have some co-hosts that be able to go and do some new things. But we ha have a new co-host. And our new co-host, she's going to come and, and tell a little bit about herself. But her name is Miss Keisha glass so everybody welcome miss keisha glass everybody Hi, hello. <laughs> hello pastor jay how you doing miss keisha doing so good <laughs> go ahead and tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what you look forward to do on anointed radio well hello good evening i'm keisha the toy glass I am an author, international speaker, and I'm an entrepreneur, and I am just grateful to God for this opportunity to use my voice, to share God, and to share what he has done um, for us and how he can, you know, uh, elevate the people's lives all over the world. So I'm just grateful to be a part of the Anointed Radio uh, network. Thank you so much, Pastor Jay, again. I'm grateful to join the team. So here I am. So I'm looking forward to what God has in store. Amen. And I cannot wait to see what God has in store for your ministry, especially coming on to Anointed Radio and doing great things. Yes, so sir. we know you, you, you about to go to the stars. So <laughs> get, get ready for it. Yes, like, sir. <laughs> so, um, we have a person that's been on the show before. He's a, a, a man that is historically, to me, 
uh, he's done great things. Um, he's he started Ty Scott Records. He's helped so many gospel artists get to where they are today. He still is doing music himself. He's he's implemented so many great things, and I'm just have a pleasure to have him on the platform today. But today we have Bishop Leonard Scott. Everybody, how you doing, Bishop? I am doing well. Thank you, Pastor. Bless you, man. Thank you for allowing Amen. us to be on. I, I I appreciate you coming on. You know, our my little platform. I I, I love that you was able to say. You know, I'm gonna spend time with Pastor Jay today. And you got more than a little platform. You got a huge platform. <laughs> and we just thank the Lord for you. <laughs> Amen. So one thing. So let's go ahead and um, everybody. Let's dig into the interview today. Because, Bishop, you have so many things that you're having um, going on in your life, in your ministry, in your music. Um so first, let's ask the, the icebreaker question. What is one new thing that you've done since you've retired? Oh, one new thing that I've done since uh, we've retired. Well, one thing we did, we, we went on a mission to keep hymns alive. And uh, we've been doing that for a couple of years now. And it's very invigorating. Um, you know, I was kind of troubled because a lot of the... Um, the younger generation don't know the the standard hymns of the church that we grew up on. Um, and, and, and to be truthful about it, when I was little, you know, I didn't really understand them. Uh, and you say, oh, here they come with those old songs again. And uh, but you know what? The older I got, the better those songs got, you know, and, and I'm not against the new songs. I love the new songs, the praise and worship songs. But I tell you. When, when things get rough um, and, and man, I might be laying on my sick bed, you know, I might not need a, uh, you know, one of those uh, praise songs that, you know, happy, happy, happy. I might need a Jesus keep me near the cross, you know, cover me in the blood. You know, <laughs> you know sometimes you just need to go a little deeper. And that's yeah. what those songs do. You know, there's a lot of theology in them. And, um, and, 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 you know, we need, we need the, don't get me wrong, we need those songs, but I believe that when we weigh things too much on, on the side, you know, we, we have a lot of theology today uh, about uh, the get rich, you know, and, and, and uh, I don't have anything wrong with being rich. Abraham was rich. Job was rich. You know, there's a lot of rich people in the Bible, but the thing is, when that becomes you know, the overriding theme of Christianity. There's a problem there. There's a problem there. Because Jesus said, except you take up your cross and follow me. Um, and so, uh, you know, if, if you're going to be a Christian, there's going to be some trouble. Because uh, quiet is kept. If you don't have any trouble, you probably don't have any anointing. And, and, and see, that's one thing that, is is major because one thing like I, we were talking about backstage is that the hymns hold so much biblical biblical context where it 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 it, it shows you scripture in hymns. A lot of times when we would sing hymns, I didn't know that it was scripture until I started mm -hmm. hearing preachers start preaching. I was like, hey, that's a, isn't that a song? <laughs> and it it and it helped. It, it's kind of like. How we did with learning conjunction junction what's your function right you know the hymns, <laughs> the hymns was the the learning tools that we heard especially you know as, as a baptist we had hymns the deacons come up if you could sing or not and they come up and they they sing the hymns to open up service and i never really thought about how important that was because they were setting mm -hmm. the atmosphere they right. were setting the tone before the praise and worship came on before anything, they set the order of service so that yeah, yeah, yeah. people could get their mind right. The past me not old oh, gentle saviors, you know, those hymns helped set so many things in place so that when you were coming into church and you might've been going through something or you might've been stressing through something, 
<laughs> because you can stress through something. Yeah. Those hymns set the tone so the service could be able to be s- smoothly ran through. So yeah. <clears throat> do you feel that nowadays that the the younger generation even know about hymns? Because nowadays churches only I haven't seen a hymn book, a hymnal in years. Yeah. So uh, so <clears throat> do you think it's because they moved away from it? Because now we're between a generation and a generation that grew up with grandma, grandpa that had hymns. They were like, oh, we don't need all that. We could just get some praise and worship in. We just need three people. We don't need choirs no more. We just get three people to do praise and worship and we could get in the church and get on out. And now we have a generation that they don't remember these days. Like they don't remember right. going to church with grandma and them singing hymns and things like that, because now there's a gap. So do you feel like people would moved away from it and the young generation know about it? Or do you feel like they don't know about it? Cause to me, I think they don't even know about it. Yeah. A lot of them don't. A lot of the younger generation are not familiar with the hymns and um, that's, that's not a good thing. Um, and, and like you say, a lot of, choirs and i believe choirs are gonna come back man they almost have to to. (laughs) choirs are coming i mean church choirs you know i I, because we we have you know the ricky dillards we have choirs that are still going on hezekiah walker that have never stopped but the church choir and many churches man have it's like over you know it's just praise team and um and and i believe that that you're right a lot of the young people because when we did this project this uh, Keep Hymns Alive project, we did it right before. Well, we, we had set up that we were going to have a 200-voice choir. You know, we had got this venue, this large church, and we were going to have not only the, the choir on stage, but the people uh, in the congregation singing these hymns with the words projected up and, and got all that set up. And then uh, COVID-19 said, no, you ain't. It ain't going to happen. You know? <laughs> And so we still did the project, but it wasn't like that. You know, we had to take a few singers and isolate them, you know, in a studio and and to get it done. A lot of overdubbing and doubling and and that kind of thing and sending the the, uh, music off to the people we wanted to lead it, you know, and they get in the studio somewhere. So it was a different setup. but We got the project done, but it was interesting that a lot of the young people that we used to do the choir part, they had never heard those songs before. Some of them, and they would say, man, that's a good song, you know? And, and they are, they're powerful songs. And, and, and you talked about a lot of theology in those songs. Not only theology, but, but a lot of them have powerful testimonies at the bottom of them, where those, those writers of those have, and, and the Bible says, you know, they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. A lot of the testimonies of the of the struggles that that these uh, hymn writers have gone through are, are just powerful, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and and I think if if we reintroduce them uh, to this generation, I think you're going to see something powerful happen. Amen. I, I I think that's definitely this generation's looking for something. You know, this is a generation that looks for information. Like, you, this isn't the pass me down generation. You know, the pass me mm-hmm. down generation was I got the word from someone else. I, I learned about something from someone else. This is the I look it up. I, I mm-hmm. figure it out on my own generation. And I really believe that in this generation, they're looking for that. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's sad that I've seen so many young people diagnose themselves with so many things that I was like, I've never thought about any of that at your age. Wow. You know, 11 year old talking about I'm depressed with anxiety. You can't spell anxiety. Like my grandma would say, don't use words you can't spell. So it's just kind of mm-hmm. like um, this generation's looking for love. This generation's mm-hmm. looking for that, that missing piece. And a lot of this generation is wondering like, man, why why does it feel different well let's first of all let's put it put it out there there's there's a lot of missing gaps because people don't have god in their life mm. they don't even have the missing the 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 umption of knowing like some of us had god but we did what we wanted to do but we knew what god expected from us what god's mm. standard was for us but when you don't know 
and you're just living and looking and searching. You have so much information that you're so you're you're the information just makes you so watered down because you have mm-hmm. so much information, but you don't know which to go for. You know, right. I, I always tell my personal testimony. When I was younger, I was an atheist and I didn't believe in anything. And when I studied the religions as a as a teenager, I learned that everybody talked about this man named Jesus. Mm. And I said, well, if they keep talking about this man named Jesus in the Quran and Hinduism and and, and, and all these different religions, then I need to know about this man named Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, See, I'm on to something. Huh? <laughs> so I was like, okay, now I I, I know where, where my source was because when you say Jesus, there's a power behind it. Just saying right. the the name of Jesus and, he, and and it makes the the demons tremble and and you could see it when people get feel some type of way. Yeah, <laughs> when you say Jesus and they get angry. And they they, yeah. they have it hit you. You say Jesus, and you you, you wonder why people don't want to f- mess with you, and they walk away from you because you start to realize that there's true power, and then people have been trying to hold you back from yeah. learning the true power of Jesus Christ and what He's done. Because some people don't love themselves and think that they shouldn't be loved, but until they meet a man named Jesus, a man named man, Jesus. <laughs> Their life will change. Better preach, man. <laughs> man, I'm not trying to. You know, you give a preacher a microphone. You, we start. I'm telling the- you, a man. I met a man named Jesus. <laughs> a man named Jesus. And you know, one thing that I was, I was going back to what you were saying about the hymns. There was a reason. So service would go hymns, praise and worship, choir. Mm-hmm. A lot of. Taking those parts out is the reason why some people are having issues in the church. People didn't realize the choir was for you. <laughs> people, when you praise and worship, we all know praise and worship will give praise to God. Worship, you're worshiping God for, for who he is. You're praising God for what he's done. You get mm-hmm. that out the way. But when the choir came up, was to fill you back up mm. so that during your week, you was encouraged. That's why mm-hmm. we had the song Encourage Yourself and we had all these different songs so that when you went through your week, there's a lot of people leaving church angry because they didn't get to praise. They didn't get to worship, but they haven't been filled back up because the choir mm-hmm. is gone. Wow. The, yeah. the hymnals is gone because it's the <laughs> people coming to church cussing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well... <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, the hymnals got you oh, in order. You're like, oh, Lord, let me let me get myself right. They already start the hymns. You you, you hearing them deacons singing, pass me, not old gentle savior. And you get your yeah. mind right. And then yeah. you go into the order of service. The order of service is all messed up. Right. Yeah. Because we're missing pieces. We're missing things that was made for us to be able to sustain for the week. And yep. I've really, man, I'm telling you, Bishop, what you what you're what you're doing is powerful, Bishop, because we got to start getting back to the basics. Church That's has it. That's right it. now is not working. That's it. We gotta gotta get back to the basics, and 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 we got these short uh, attention spans. People don't want to stay in church over 45 minutes. Man, when we was coming up, I don't want to start talking about it. <laughs> We were, in, we were in church three or four, three, four hours on a Sunday. I mean, all day Sunday from early Sunday school to, to, to the morning worship, you know, to afternoon worship, to evening service. And and then sometimes don't have a revival. We be in revival every night and don't let it be a good first week. We'd be in there two or three weeks every mm. night. You just get your homework and sit on the back pew, you know, and do your little homework. But uh, have you know, a shut in and be stuck overnight with yeah, that, yeah. That, and and, that and, and see, it it's not that people can't do it because they do it for other stuff. They sit and watch a movie for a couple of hours, no problem. It's 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 where's your priority? Where's your love? Where's your first love? Mm. It, it ought to be Jesus. It ought to be God. You know, and if we right. can spend a couple of hours watching a football game or three or four hours, you know, and, and make a whole 
uh, process out of it, you know, from the tailgating and then partying and, you know, all the way down. And you've, you've taken a whole a half a day, but you can't stay in the church service for one hour. You know, it's like last one to get there and the first one to leave. Where's your love? I mean, where's your priority? So I, through. I, I got to ask you, Bishop, you know, don't be through. I got, I got a question for you to follow up on that one. So Bishop with, with all the years that have gone by and you've been being in church, what's one thing that you say that is missing in the church? Oh man. Um, I, I think what, what we were just talking about the priority um, of, and, and the, so a hundred years ago when I was a kid, not a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Everybody went to church. Mm -hmm. Everybody went to church was a part of our lifestyle. I can remember when I was a little child before my parents got saved, they would go out and party on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when they get home late, you know, they get home, the sun coming up. Guess what? They wouldn't go to church, but they send us. They send us down to the corner church that we didn't even go to. They send y'all go down there, and we better not say, "Well, y'all ain't." You know, they would knock us into tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But everybody, church was a part of your lifestyle. People went to church, and and you know, it was on Sunday, man. You couldn't do nothing but go to church. Everything was closed. There wasn't no mm -hmm. games on Sunday. Nothing went on on Sunday because you were supposed to give that day to God. Mm. But now, you know, it's like church is like we don't need it no more, you know, which is that's a lie from the pit. We need church more than we ever needed it. So I got to ask you. So this is me being a young person and and, and and this is what a lot of young people say. But church is in my heart, Bishop. <laughs> I'm not be in the church building. Church is in my heart. What would you say to that, Bishop? Well, that's good. Keep church in your heart. <laughs> but I tell you what, other people need to know what's in your heart too. And, and here's the deal: the Bible says, "Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together." There's a reason to come together. Mm -hmm. um, and and see, people think that. The only thing that really goes on at church is you sit there and somebody preaches to you or preaches at you or tells you how wrong you are, which you don't want to hear because you already know you're wrong and you don't want to stop being wrong. You want to do wrong. Just tell me uh, that I'm OK and that I'm going to be all right, that Jesus loves me. Well, Peter said, repent. <laughs> yeah, and. and and, that, and that's, the, that's the thing, you know, we need to really find out what the Bible says. We say, well, all I have to do is have faith. All I have to do is, well, you're right. You got to have faith, but you got to have faith in God. And if you have faith in God, you're going to believe his word. And his word says, repent. That means stop sinning. And we want a sugar-coated gospel that says you can do whatever you want because God loves you so much that he's going to forgive everything. And he will. If you repent and stop doing it, that you so, know that's not an easy message. I mean, that's that's not candy to your ears. So, because you know, most people, you know, most people, it, it, how can I say this? I'm not going to say a short code. So, most people don't read their Bible. So, when it comes down to it, you can't have a person be to put to a standard that they don't understand because they've never read it for themselves you know how many times i never understood there was a bishop in east oakland east bay deliverance in east oakland 73rd and international his name was bishop mack he was shocked and he said one thing he said if you ain't remember anything else for me because i remember i was falling asleep he was a kojic they had church every hour on the hour on sunday I, we was there from early morning to midnight I told my mom I needed to go to school tomorrow. I need to go home. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing that stuck with me about what he told me, he said, boy, if I if you don't remember anything else, let read that word for yourself. Mm. And nobody will ever be able to lie to you. Mm -hmm. Right. 
And yes, that's yes. what's missing. How many times people, I don't even think people stand up and read the word and grab their Bibles and know where the preacher coming from. The preacher could be saying out of Alakazoo chapter seven, verse five. <laughs> and it, <Look> Hezekiah. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and okay. they would not know. And I think that's a problem where if they're not knowing, there's so many people, it's just like, I, I, I preached this once called, um, what is that? Remedial faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remedial faith. You keep going through the same thing over and over again because you're not learning the lesson the first time. Mm. Yeah. You're and, and that, God. That, 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 that's a reason also that people need to go to church because that's where you learn how to read the Bible. I mean, that's, you know, people, I, I remember years ago um, when I was a deacon at, at a church and the pastor, it was one of the churches where they had church three or four hours. And so uh, they had a meeting with the pastor to try to shorten the services because people were saying, you know, we're inviting people, but they don't come back because they say we hold too long. <laughs> and I never will forget. They said, well, pastor, you know, we read the Bible here and we read the Bible here and 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 why don't we cut out some of this reading of the word? And and I mean, he just hung his head and shook his head and said, "You know what?" He said, "That's the only time some people read their Bible is when they come to church." And so you know, and and he said it about. And he said, "Well, we pray here, we pray here." He said, mm, "He said that's the only time some people pray is when they come to church." <laughs> And that's and that's where you learn. That's where you learn to pray. That's where you learn uh, the word of God. And 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 that's where you know when, if you don't come to church, you you got a problem. You're gonna have a problem. Church is not man's idea. Jesus said, "Upon this rock I will build my church." It's Jesus' church. You don't want to come to church. You don't want to come to Jesus. It's His house. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> he passed the collection plate to the right hand side <laughs> but, you know it, it's kind of like what you said people want to come in and get a sugar coated word and go and mm -hmm. and just be in church to say as a check off list but then one thing that I can always say and I say this all things you can't shack I, the old folks used to say this and it, it still get me it say you can't shack with the devil and expect God to pay the bill Mm. Mm. Wow. So you can't you can't blame God and, and, and get and talk about I'm church hurt when you were doing things on your own mm. and you did the opposite of what the Bible told you to do. We yeah. can't get mad at God. Right. God is a God right. that, that is that's loving to be like, you know what, you did what you want to do. I'm still here. I love you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Bring yourself. Let's go. Let's restore yeah. you back to where you were. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's one thing that we have to get to a point of knowing the word. Yeah. Like I, I've, I've talked to people and some people go to church just to check that box. How do I know that? Because there's certain scriptures that if we've been in church for 20 years, we shouldn't be not surprised about the same stories these stories are the same you might get a new perspective you might get a new vision because of learning experiences yeah. and things like that but you shouldn't still be learning your books of your bible right they, they don't change <laughs> they six right. books of the bible they don't change we have to get to a point of substance you know mm -hmm. one thing that i admired about the muslims is that they are disciplined when it comes down to knowing the quran why the people of Christ aren't disciplined when it says to be disciplined that we have the power of self-discipline we have the power of, to be able to love and have man and we have to get to a point to know the word for ourselves because the enemy and his dominion knows the word too right and they said I, in the bible that they will make you confused the, 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 so, the problem is we, we got a lot of church members, but we don't have a lot of disciples. Mm. You know? And that's mm. what God said, go make disciples. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between a disciple and a church member. Mm. Just somebody, you know, sign their name on the roll and um, come every now and then. But, but a disciple, 
the ones that learn about. And that's what a disciple is, a learner. And, mm. and the, the, the basis for the word disciple is discipline. You know, you, you're willing to do what it takes in order to follow Christ Jesus. Christians supposed to be, you're supposed to be little Jesus. We're supposed to be representatives of Jesus on this planet. Yeah. And if he would do it, that's what we ought to be doing. If he wouldn't do it, that's what we shouldn't be doing. What would Jesus do? Something. Yeah. Keep in mind. I, I missed that bumper plate. I just like seeing that when I was a kid. What would Jesus do? So, Bishop, going into it, and, you know, one thing I want to ask is with your with your music, because this isn't your only music. Do you see, do you see making more projects about this, like like a music documentary type situation, kind of like you know having the him him you know keeping hymns alive documentary where mm -hmm. you could break it down. You know, I think Bob would be dope if you teamed up with Bob um, and be able to just talk about the breakdown of the hymns, because a lot of people don't remember the artists of the, the hymns that we sing that we've right. known about. And mm -hmm. I think that just documenting that would be dope. Have you guys thought about doing something like that? Yes, yes, we have. And 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 it's interesting you say that um, a hymn doesn't have to be a real old song to be a hymn. Um, I think about um, Andre Crouch. You know, he I hadn't been that long passed away. But even before he passed away, some of his songs were already in the hymn books. The blood, you know, the blood that Jesus shed for me is in the hymn book before he died. It's a hymn. And so it doesn't have to be a really old song. It just has to be, I, I believe, um, now, if you if you just look at the basic definition of a hymn, a hymn is just a spiritual song. That's all. And so in that case, any song you would sing in church could be classified as a hymn. But in our culture, that's not what a hymn is. In our culture, a hymn is a certain kind of song that we sing in a church service and and some songs that are about jesus would not be classified as a hymn they would be classified as a praise song hmm. or as a, a worship song um and so um and we would classify a hymn as a more traditional song um songs that and and sometimes songs have to evolve Thomas Dorsey, um, who wrote Precious Lord, Take My Hand. I, I, you know, it's hard for me to imagine him being kicked out of churches for singing Precious Lord. But back in that era, uh, they said it, it was like ragtime. It was like boogie woogie music, you know, stuff that we would consider as super traditional you know, that back then was like cutting edge you know uh, and, and so today it's in the hymn books it's con right. considered traditional you know um, and so sometimes you have to wait to see you know how things will evolve some of the songs that are sung today will be hymns will evolve into what we call hymns mm. okay Never so that that you just opened my eyes to that because mm -hmm. I didn't think because yeah. oh happy day they thought that yeah. was cut edge too they thought that was that was that was R and B now that's that's an interesting song because that was written from a hymn mm. go to your hymn book there's an oh happy day in the hymn book and it, and it was a, Edwin Hawkins a, a Hawkins arranged it you know for uh, it doesn't doesn't really sound a whole lot like the original hymn sounded but but i i believe that it will it'll end up in the hymn book as, as time okay. goes on and so one thing i would say is what was the most challenging experience while making this project of course COVID was definitely a challenge um just getting every 
all the pieces together and and uh, and, and getting it done. And we we had planned on videoing, videoing the whole thing. That was a challenge also, since now we couldn't do a live uh, type video. So the videos that we have done, we've had to kind of put something together for it. And a lot of them just ended up being lyric videos. So that was a challenge. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think it's going to still accomplish the goal that we had for it, which is uh, reintroducing hymns to okay. uh, to this generation. Okay. So speaking of this generation, you have a radio show, and it's called Gospel G- Gospel Gems. Go yeah. ahead and tell us what was what was the the inspiration behind starting that show, Gospel Gems. You know, we we. Uh, we believe that there are a lot of people that God has anointed for such a time as this. And um, as older artists, you know, go by the wayside, new, newer artists come in. And that's not only artists, but uh, ministers, preachers, um, all of the gifts. I believe all of the gifts that the Bible, the spiritual gifts, and as, as well as the natural gifts. Uh, have a place in God's kingdom. I believe every talent that God has given us, uh, he's expecting us to uh, give him a return on his investment, praise the Lord. And so uh, we want to be a conduit, uh, a way for some of the newer artists to be exposed to the people of this generation and and not only to the church, uh, but to the world. And I uh, believe that the message of many of these uh, artists and singers and musicians and uh, spoken word of preachers will impact uh, this generation and this last, this, as the Bible calls it, the last days. Mm-hmm. Um, and I tell you, and, and I, I believe that there's going to be a special anointing because it seems like our adversary has just let everything loose. I, you know, I guess that's what you do when it, when you find when you realize that your time is about up. Yeah. You just let everything loose, mm-hmm. and so it's going to take some powerful uh, anointing in order to combat um, the, these forces of, of evil and darkness. And so, uh, we have gospel gems is a, a way of exposing uh, some of these up and coming uh, ministries. And uh, we're real excited about that is at our um, YouTube page, Bishop Leonard Scott uh, Ministries at YouTube. Uh, If you go there and um, subscribe and you'll be on our uh, list there. And and you can, if you are interested in in being one of those uh, artists, that we can interview and and uh, hopefully give you a launch into this generation um, for your ministry. Okay, so I would ask, what's one thing that you see common with new in- indie artists nowadays? Hmm, one thing that I see common with new indie artists mm-hmm. That is a good question. I, I I would hope that I would see that they're anointed. <laughs> of course, uh, thankfully, you know, everybody is different. When, when I, and maybe that's the common thing I see, everybody's different. <laughs> All the artists, you know, are unique in, in their approach and unique. I haven't seen really very many that are trying to be like somebody else. You know, back in the day you had, artists that would try to be like the, the one that was successful, really successful now, then you'd have a, a lot of people trying to sing like them or trying to uh, do songs like them. So maybe that'll make me successful. But mm-hmm. I, I think I think this generation has, has found out that you're going to be successful when you are you, you know, when you have your unique gift, uh, let your unique gift come forth and you're not trying to be like somebody else, you know? Um, yeah. 
That's, I don't see a lot of people today trying to be like somebody else. Hey Amen. You know, and I think that's that's a move in the right direction, 2024, because what what we we've been saying here at Anointed Radio a lot is be your unique self with your unique gift, so that God could be able to use you uniquely. Mm-hmm. And um, that's one thing a lot of independent artists have to be encouraged in because sometimes they feel like, oh, well, I'm being unique and and, and my my message, my my artistry is not being accepted. But, you know, one thing that I remember, there was a time when Jonathan McReynolds wasn't accepted, but he kept being unique on how he was and right. look what he is now. So I, anybody that's an independent artist out there that is that is working on your craft, stay uniquely to yourself you heard mm-hmm. bishop bishop said it's best to be you and mm-hmm. your own unique approach so just stay uniquely you the mm-hmm. best way i can say that so bishop what is your vision for gospel gems well the vision for gospel gems is to uh, expose uh talents and and people that are, are coming up we, we've we've already had the opportunity to uh, interview some very unique ministries uh, that I'm excited to share with the world. And, um, you know, things are so different today than they were. So uh, when when we founded Ty Scott Records in 1976, I think it was, that's probably before some of y'all's parents, some of, some of y'all grandparents was born, praise the Lord. <laughs> Things were so much different, yeah. you know, the, re- the recording, the re- records. We had these big records, you know, 33. They had eight songs on one side and eight songs on the other side. And, you know, just totally different. Um, mm-hmm. And then the cassettes came along. I mean, and, and you've seen the evolution of, of uh, and, and print music was a big thing then, too. You know, music books, like you were talking about hymn books. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we still have hymn books, but most most churches they just project the words up on the wall, um, and and so you know this transition of 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 the way that that music is disseminated among the masses is has totally changed, and it's almost gone down. Used to be, uh, sing, you know, singles. I don't know if y'all remember forty fives with the big hole in the middle. Y'all don't remember that. <laughs> I don't. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. no, I right. don't either. I, I didn't go back too far. <laughs> but it used to be that you I just bought cassette tapes. Uh, that's that's when I cassette tape. You came in with cassette tapes. All right. Yeah, that was that was right after that. And and so, but that was it was a sequence, and you know, you just bought a song. Uh and then you had a B side. You had a the, the song that they was pushing, and then on the other side, you know, yeah. it was you go in and get a record and you listen to it on your phonograph player and and then when they came out with the cassettes and and every time they would come out with something new it was like oh wow this is going to destroy the music industry because now uh people are going to have these cassettes and they're going they can take and record it themselves on, on you know but the quality was so bad that you know you couldn't do too many of them like that but then when CDs came out you know CDs like original type deal digital and so oh no now it's going to be you know and every time and then when did when uh these these uh digital platforms came out the streaming it's like oh people are not going to have to buy music anymore cuz it's get it on the streaming and y'all remember the big thing with Napster you know and all of that but every time something happens and we think it's going down the tube it gets better it gets better. It gets better. And and with the streaming platforms, now the artists and the songwriters and publishers still not getting paid what they should be getting paid. But what it's done is just is has broadened the um your potential for an audience. Because now, whereas when you were kind of before the streaming, which is on internet, which is goes around the world, you know, you were kind of confined to whatever your area was, you know, like 
the United States. If you were, if you had a big hit in the United States, it might get a little bit. But now, anybody over the whole world can tune into you and what you're doing. And so, um, it's it's just a different playing field now than it used to be. And and uh, so many open doors. And and you know, it's it's interesting that our, our the Lord gave us this year for our theme for our church is 2024 is the, the year of the open door. That God is going to open doors for his people for this year for 20. And uh, it's just be, be ready to walk through that door that God's going to open up for you. And, and it's already started happening for us. And uh, yeah, look for it. Open that door is opening, man. I like yeah. that. You know, one thing that, you know, just to give you validity of what you're saying, people, he knows what he's talking about, y'all. First of all, I want y'all to know you can have a whole market that's not in the country that you live in. And, you know, I, I learned that in marketing with my music as an independent artist, that when I was, I charted in Netherlands, never been to Netherlands a day in my life, but my song charted. On Netherlands because there was so many people playing the song. So mm -hmm. sometimes when you feel discouraged about your music, like man, no one here, you know, is, is playing my music. Broaden your horizon. The whole yeah. world is open for you to be able to hear your music. And you you might be in Germany. Like there was a lot of people that was um what what was uh uh Nina Simone. Mm. She went she went to Europe and blew, and she she had a bigger audience in, in Europe than what she did in the States during that time frame. And, yeah. and and it's now digital where you could be able to go across the water and really have your music ministry reach people that before you had never been able to do it. So don't be discouraged because the States, the States, uh, from what I see, the States always catch on after, you know, mm. but but they're going to catch on, you know, <laughs> a prophet isn't welcome in his own house, his own home, his own, his own area. But can I tell you something that people will see your music somewhere and they will really run with that thing. And they'll come back to you and you'll be like, Oh, wow. I never would have thought. So I just want to encourage mm -hmm. some, some independent artists out there. Um, maybe your marketing scheme is off. See where, see where someone naturally likes your music. Like for me, like an example, I'm Netherlands. I put mm -hmm. something Netherlands and they listen to it. <laughs> I've never been there. I got, I'll have to visit one day. But you should see those same things. And uh, Spotify Music and Apple uh, Apple Artists gives you those analytic tools as an right. independent artist to look at who gravitates to your music so that you can know how to better market to it. So I hope you guys are taking these gems because this is some free marketing, some free classes for you to be able to really hone your craft and music. So Bishop, this will be the last question. What is next after everything? What is next? Oh, well, I tell you what, um, I'd have to ask the Lord what is next because uh, he, he doesn't give me all the information up front and uh, he gives me a little bit uh, here, a little there, a little. And I guess if he gave me everything, I, I wouldn't have to have faith with a, I'd be walking by sight rather than by walking by faith. <laughs> But, but when he gives me a little bit and I walk in what he gives me, you know, he'll give me a little bit more. And uh, as long as he's with me, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. And, and you know what? I think sometimes um, maybe he doesn't tell me everything because maybe if he did, I would. Uh, you, ever, you ever thought if, if he, I wonder if he had told Joseph what he was going to have to go to before he became this ruler that, that you know, he said, you're going to rule over everybody. And Joseph, he's so happy he went and told everybody. He, he didn't tell him, but first, you're going to be sold by your brothers. They're going to almost kill you. And then they, you're going to be a slave. And then you're going to be thrown in prison for something you didn't even do. And, and this is going to be about, what, 15 years of your life. 
Joseph might say, uh, tell you what, Lord, that's okay. I don't have to rule nobody. I just I, <laughs> <laughs> let me stay here with my daddy, you know, <laughs> my nice coat on, you know. Yeah. And so uh he knows how much we can bear, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Give us to us in little chunks, we we can make it. Mm -hmm. We can make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I can tell you right now, if God told me half of the things, I probably would have messed it up. <laughs> I probably wouldn't be in the right places. I probably wouldn't have talked to the right people, all kind of things. So, yes, I, I agree with you on that, Bishop, because mm -hmm. God knows your mindset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, man, I'm telling you, that that's amazing. So. One thing I want to go ahead and do is say, Bishop, I appreciate you for coming on to the show and sharing with us and to, and 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 spending time with us today on Anointed Radio. And um, one more time for anybody that want to to come on to Gospel Gym, what what would they need to do to reach out to you, Bishop? Well, we want to invite everybody to come over to our YouTube uh, channel, which is Bishop Leonard Scott ministries and and there is where you'll find the gospel gems all, all the programming of it and also you'll be able to communicate with us but we want you to subscribe subscribe to our channel and uh, and the more people who subscribe you know it's going to help us to build this platform for these new artists that are coming on um, and for them for them to launch th what they're doing and to be able to be effective uh, in these in these last days. Amen. So everybody, make sure you guys go subscribe to Bishop Leonard Scott Ministries on YouTube. Make sure that you stay connected, share it, put it onto Facebook. Um, Gospel Gems is going to be big, so support it. Yeah. You know, and it's a, it's a great coming together as a community, as a collective, to be able to launch artists into the industry that we might not heard of and right. bishop is making that platform for us so make sure you guys connect any any artists that's out there that's, that's wanting to connect make sure you connect as well and bishop i appreciate you for coming on to the show you you know it's i've known you for some years now and yes. i appreciate the support that you've given us and being able to be on the show, this is not your first time, but this is your second time you've been on to the show. And we've enjoyed you every time that you've came. So I appreciate you. I can't even say my normal thing because it's already applied. Because usually I'll say, you know, now you've been on Noitra Radio, you like family. Well, I already check on, <laughs> on Father's Day and Christmas and New Year's and say, Bishop, you all right? Happy New yeah. Year. So you already yeah. family. So Amen. one thing I I, I just thank you for spending your time because that's one thing that you can't get back is time. So we really appreciate you, Bishop, for coming on to the show and sharing all the great things that you're doing in your ministry with us. Well, thank you. And thank you for the opportunity and thank you for what you are doing. You are, are making a, a powerful, tremendous impact on our culture and on our world by what you're doing. And, and like you said, not just reaching America, but reaching other nations with the gospel. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. I received that. And and one thing, everybody, if you're just joining in tonight, you can go to our podcast platform. Our podcast platform is where you can be able to see all of our previous shows, almost 400 shows, seven years worth of, of just good interviews, good conversation where you could be able to get a word you could get some gems you could get some wisdom so definitely make sure that you go and follow us on the podcast platform we're on everything it's easier for me to say this we're on everything but title and black effect but we're working on those things so make sure you go follow us on the podcast platform make sure that you follow us on social media shout outs to all my instagram people Show some likes, register with the podcast. All my Twitch people, same thing. Let's get these likes, these comments. I appreciate you guys all for tuning in with us and spending the hour with us. We really appreciate you guys for doing that. I want you guys to know that God is able. So no matter how hard it seems, no matter how much the enemy attacks you, just know that God still resides on the throne and that he's still making a way for you because it might seem hard, but God got you. 
he has a ram in the bush for you. So make sure you stay prayed up. Make sure that you take care of yourself because health is wealth and that you mm-hmm. know that no matter what happens, God loves you and he is there for you. And I'm going to say my real Baptist saying, um, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love you if you <laughs> like it or not. <laughs> so with that being, church is dismissed with that. And we will see you <laughs> next week. Peace, y'all. Bye, everybody. 